How are we now, Mark? From uh, Central Parish Department of Memes is in the house. Ah, there's a little delay, but it's happening. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, that that was all planned. Thank you for laughing at that joke. That's my set. Thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, before we get started, we're going to do some giveaways. And I know y'all are noticing this fly jacket right here. This is tailor made from someone. I don't know what the tag says. And the Goodwill little sticker thing is still hitting the back of my neck. So it's feeling pretty good. Uh, I'm guessing that it came from that Garth Brooks thing that happened not too long ago. Like, well, we don't need this no more. It's over. Um, so we're going to do some giveaways. Where's our couples at? All the couples in the house make some noise. Now, is a couple willing to come up here on the stage for a couple interview? Couple interview. Anyone interested? Come on up. It's your chance to win some merch. Oh, we got a couple. Come on down. Let's give them a round of applause. All right, let's see. I have no idea what I'm doing, but we'll figure it out. There we go. Yeah, come on in. I'm gonna hand you the mic. I, know I, I have no shame. <laughs> She's married to me, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, That's my sister, oh, yeah. Do I need to do tricks or something? No, just don't uh, do you have any tricks? No, I don't. <laughs> That's the first question. So, um, let's see. Okay. First of all, how long have y'all been together? 15 years. 15 years. Let's give them a round of applause. 15 years. Very good. My advice, keep on going. Doing good. 15 years. You're, you're clear. I'm, you're I'm, good. I'm too old to get divorced and I'm not starting this shit over. <laughs> Why am I doing comedy? You have it down. Um, all right. What are our names? Lori. And Terry? Yes. Uh, Terry. Terry. Lori and Terry. Let's give them a round of applause. Lori and Terry, thank you guys for joining us on Comedy Night. Uh, so far, you like all the food? Everything was good? It was delicious. Very good? Very, very tasty. <laughs> very good. Um, let's see. So are there any hobbies? Is there any hobbies that she does that you're like, what in the world? She makes wreaths, Christmas wreaths, Mardi Gras wreaths, St. Patrick's Day wreaths. If there's a holiday, she's got a wreath for it. So I know exactly what that means. So uh, It means I have my own craft room. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. There's a craft room full of wreaths. <laughs> uh, every holiday, birthday, you name it. Very cool. Uh, what about you, sir? Do you have any hobbies? Play bagpipes, guitar, different instruments. See, that's awesome. That's awesome. Bagpipes, have you ever done them both at the same time? I mean, that's why we have feet. You got to get them. You got to get them in there. 
I can't imagine a guitar solo with a bagpipe as well. I can't That'd either. That'd be... If you drop a bagpipe and an accordion from the roof, which one lands first? Doesn't matter. It's win-win. Oh! Starting us off with jokes. That's what I'm talking about. All right, Mama. We got one, too? We got a joke? I, I actually, I have one joke. She's got one. I got one joke. All right. What do you call a boomerang that doesn't come back? I don't know. A stick. Mm. Oh. Okay, very good. All right. Hey, you picked us. Don't I know. Me. So congratulations. We're going to give you this stainless steel tumbler for the best joke out of the couple. Bye, stuff. Let's give a round of applause. Have a good night. Well, thank you so much. Uh, that's the only step I have. I haven't made any dollars doing this. Thank you. <laughs> got two mics. Hey, which one sounds better? This one. That's the one I gave to y'all. No one signed up, but this would have been your mic. Cough, cough. So now it's dead silent. Okay, good. Exactly what I'm looking for. Silence. Okay. Look, I, I don't know if anyone can follow that. You know, we'll talk about wreaths all night, probably. Thank you. <laughs> so I still have stuff to give away. We got another couple that wants to come up. Uh, all right. Very good. Come on up. We have the one step. And the stage is made out of a... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> All right. What are our names? Caitlin. Michael. Michael and Caitlin. Let's give them a round of applause. How long have we been together? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> That's the right answer. So we've been together a lot longer than that, like 13 Forever. Years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel you. It, you know, I recognize that haircut. I've got the same exact haircut. So I know what forever feels like. Solar panel. Yes, solar panel. That is genius. Yes. But also, I don't know if I can use it. Is it copywritten? No? no. Okay. Yeah, All right. Thank you. Solar panels. By Jeff. So, uh, let's see. Do we have jokes? We have one. You don't have to be uh, not funny, but we're, like hobbies. We'll go with hobbies first. Crafting. Crafting. Yeah, she makes wreaths as well. Yeah. <laughs> also with the wreath. Show of hands. How many in here? Uh, just want to make sure we don't offend anybody. Oh, we got another one. Yeah. And scrapbooking. So. Scrapbooking. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, no hobbies I can say in public. Oh, there you go. <laughs> that means OnlyFans. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, so anyway, uh, now that I've uh, thoroughly uh, thrown myself off track, um, let's just talk about uh, scrapbooking. Oh, do I? Yeah, yeah. So I dedicated a whole hour to, you don't know this, but I dedicated the first whole hour to scrapbooking. So uh, just give us a round. I'm sorry, Johnny. We're not, we're not doing the whole scrapbooking thing. I'm sorry. I try to do that at every comedy show we do. It never works. So I'm a big fan of scrapbooking. Uh, kidding. But, you know. We have a kid. We have a kid. Yeah. How old? Six. Six is good. Wait till they turn 10. That's because yeah. they have opinions. They have friends. Oh, he already does. Oh, great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, we got a uh, notification on that little school app the other day. Oh. That our son verbatim said, D's nuts. No. <laughs> Look. Yeah. Six years that. old. Kindergarten. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he didn't, he didn't hear that. Maybe. Oh, got me. Maybe, maybe me. Yeah. 
That's hilarious. My kid, I remember, uh, got in trouble and she came home crying. And I looked at her agenda and she got in trouble for doing the robot during math class. <laughs> and I'm like, we're going to get ice cream. <laughs> Daddy's proud. I'm proud of that one. I was like, can you show me the robot? Because I want to make sure it was a real robot and not some just janky dance move. You got to do it right. You have to do it right. And, uh, well, I'm glad. Kids kids that are expressive like that turn out to be hilarious. And I say that because my kid doesn't find me hilarious. So to his friends, he's probably hilarious. I mean, you know. This is, I'm just warning you. This is yeah, what you got yeah, coming. Yeah. Thanks for the heads up. Uh, no problem. Yeah. Uh, so we got any jokes? My life. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I don't know about that. I'm the one wearing this shirt. So yeah. this is the joke. Let's be honest. Yeah. I don't know where the bottom At button went. Change your shirt, Maybe. I don't. It's pretty snug. Okay. <laughs> Let's give them a round of applause. I think they won something, right? It's from another one of our sponsors. The first mug was from New Orleans Daiquiri Shop. And this one's from Eat the Boots, who's in the building. And if, if the size doesn't line up, they said to let them know. Because um, that's literally what their vehicle is made of, is Eat the Boot shirts. Size or colors. Because they don't see colors. That's right. (laughs) So this is fun. Uh, I got one more shirt left. If anyone wants to come up on the stage and have a little fun. Oh. Huh? Nope. Not feeling it. He said he's, he's good. So we got one more shirt if a couple wants to come up. It's painless. I don't know. We've had two couples already. I can probably come to y'all if you want. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on up. Come on up. Well, I'll let y'all randomly select a a guest at random and give them a shirt. Give it up for the couple. No, welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. I like that I'm not on stage and I'm already short, so it just makes this way better. Is that Wee Man? No, it's not. Um, yeah, just grab your microphone and we'll do this little interview thingy. Welcome. You might get the job. You might not. Who knows? Okay. Okay. I'm going to ask a series of questions and just tell me how you feel on a scale of one to ten. I feel like I'm going to shit myself right now. I ate so much food. How are the egg rolls? One to ten. 10.3. 10.3. Got some egg roll fans in the house. The cheese ones? I'm a pickle fan. The pickle ones was, was a move for me. Pickles. Very good. Very good. Well, that's a good question to start us off here. Um, you're a couple. How long have y'all been together? What's it, 20 years? Uh, what? 18. 18. 18 years together. Five years. Almost five years married. Yep. What? Give him a round of applause. Nicely done. Yeet. Yeet. <laughs> and he just learned my birthday. Oh, look, I if it's a birthday, count me out. Don't ask me what it is. I know mine, and I don't know how old I am. Well, there you go. I don't know how old you are either. Jeff. Well, it's fine. It's the beard. It's the ZV. It's the shirt. It's the shirt. This says 90s, but nope. That's 80s. the most Rocco's Modern Light shirt I've ever seen. No, Saved by the Bell. Saved by the Bell. I only watch cartoons. Oh, I didn't even notice the little triangles. All right. Say by the I was going for Garth Brooks, but whatever. Too flashy, huh? All right. Well, are y'all having a good time? <laughs> uh, get to know a little bit more about you. Okay. Um, let's go with jokes. Let's hear a good joke. What did the judge say? When the skunk walked into court, uh, Amber Turd. Close. Oh. <laughs> Odor in the court. Oh. That's my only joke. It's a solid one, though. Thank you, thank you. That's a good one. I learned it from the highlights kids books. <laughs> Make some noise for highlights kids books. Those were the best. 
those kept me busy in doctor's offices for I don't even know how long. It's just that one page where it's all black and white and you got to figure out what's what. I'll just sit there and stare at it like, I don't know what this is. Am I supposed to write on this doctor's office's book or not? Because I want to. Well, one time I picked up a book and it was already written on. And I'm like, oh, this this, this blows my whole damn mind. I had no idea we could do that. And that's when I decided to be an astronaut. No, I'm just kidding. All right, Joe, you're up. Let's get a good joke. A joke for me? I don't have jokes, man. I don't have Let's. Oh, putting dad on blast. Dad jokes. Yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a jokester, man. What's so, one of your favorite dad jokes that you've received from your dad? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> we got some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're good. Yeah, uh, got me on the spot. I don't know. Man. I don't got a joke. I'm jokeless. Refresh his memory. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, no, that's a weird incest joke that ends with somebody having sex with a goat. So, look, this is an open <laughs> stage, sir. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, not a problem. Uh, for those that do not know, Joey runs uh, one of the biggest groups. Excuse me, a burp. Um, one of the biggest groups on uh, Facebook called Eat the Boot. Eat the Most of you know that. Let's make some uh, hey. make some noise for them. And if you haven't been following, uh, I follow, and that's how I stay alive. Mainly because I'm on a diet, right? I, I eat four ounces of spinach, six ounces of rice, and uh, six ounces of chicken breast a day. That sounds terrible. It sounds terrible, but when you mix it in a bowl and you just pretend you don't care, it, it's terrible. <laughs> but but uh, one of the things I do is I watch Eat the Boot, and I'm like, oh, I can smell that picture. That cheese looks amazing. And it, how do you how do you funnel the cheese? Because there's so much cheese that happens on that page. Does it get to a point where you're like, no, 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 it's Wednesday. That was 40 pictures of cheese. No cheese, Max. No cheese, Max, dude. Nope. You're in, you're a monster. We don't police cheese. We don't police cheese. Best joke of the night. The only one I've got. I like it. Let's give him a round of applause. Thank you guys for coming up. I still have a shirt to give away. So, yeah. Let's see. Um, who can yodel? I feel like we can find a yodeler, maybe. <laughs> um, let's actually, while we're here, and we do have the entire cast from Y'all Hear a Noise, which is myself and Mark from Essential Parish Department of Memes, we have a debate about cereal. And since we have a large enough crowd, We'll get a crowd reaction and see how you guys feel and see where you're feeling on that, okay? All right. I'm going to need two teams. You ain't got to get up or anything. I'm just going to ask for noise, okay? Uh, it's going to be Fruity Pebbles versus Cocoa Pebbles, okay? All right. The madness. Calm down. Calm down. Okay. When I say Fruity Pebbles, y'all make some noise, and then I'll, I'll do it again with Cocoa Pebbles, okay? Here we go. Ready? Uh, Fruity Pebbles. Cocoa Pebbles. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Okay. There you go. That makes sense. Uh, I'm Team Fruity Pebbles. I don't know what y'all are thinking with these Cocoa Pebbles business. That's too much. That's too much. That's a dessert for breakfast, and then I'm going to go get chocolate. This is why I'm on a diet, for the record. I, that's why I'm only talking about food now instead of actually eating it. Anyway, who's ready for a comedy show? Uh, we've been ready. Um, so, I'll go ahead and kind of just get you guys warmed up. A little how you doing? What's new? Where you been? Who you with? 
And uh, this is being live streamed on Facebook currently. Hey, Facebook. Everybody say, hey, Facebook. <laughs> that was two types of hey, Facebook that just happened. We had the hey, Facebook, and then we had the hey, Facebook. I like them both. They both apply. Um, so this is being live streamed. So if you're not with your wives, time to keep it down. Okay. It's got that out the way. Um, so I have a shirt to give away. Who wants a shirt? Oh, oh, all right. Don't, don't get after me. If I find this on a wreath, I'm going to come for you. <laughs> uh oh, I hear question marks over there. No eat the boot wreaths. Does she have a craft room also? See. Oh, you just got read it up. The kitchen island always counts as whoever was there first. Like, that, that's how it goes in my house. There's all kinds of random crap on that island. And none of it is mine. I just passed by it going, I guess this is just how we live now. I'll clean the rest of the house, but that island, that's on y'all. Still there. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for coming. Uh, this is Lunchbox Comedy. What Lunchbox Comedy is, I'll explain it. Although we didn't have any people sign up, but I'll explain it what it is. Um, actually, I do have a good example. Uh, so what we do when you come in and you want to do time, most open mic nights, you come in, you just talk to whoever's directing the show, right? And uh, the comedians come in, they say, I want to do some comedy. So they'll come in and they'll set them up and they'll have a lineup of how they're going to do comedy and they're prepared and they're ready and they know when they're going to go on. With Lunchbox Comedy, we throw them all in this lunchbox and randomly draw them out, right? The fun behind that is you never know when you're going to go up and you never know who you're following. And it's fun because afterwards we would do an interview. Like I would sit down kind of like the couples, kind of how when I talk to the couples and stuff, same kind of thing. We would do that with that. Um, I set this lunchbox up a little bit early, right? And I had someone put a name in. And this, this is really funny because uh, he put his name in because he thought he was going to be roasted. He thought it was like a roast thing. He, he's like, oh, no, no, no. I don't want to go on stage. I just want to be roasted. And so uh, this is America. And uh, here we go. Okay. Um, first of all, I don't know what it says. There's a G there, so we're going to call you G. Is it, uh, was it Glenn? Glenn. As in Glenn, Glenn McCain? McLean? Oh. Oh. Welcome to the party, pal. That's awesome. Glenn McLean is in the building, and you know, I was going to rip you one, but like, not now. It's, it's nice things McLean. Like John McLean, Die Hard. Die Hard fans, make some noise. Alan Rickman fans, where you at? Alan Rickman. It's terrible. I know. Let's try again. <clears throat> Harry Potter. <laughs> Your wizard, Harry. I don't know. You know, John McLean. Whatever. Yippee Carrier. There you go. Uh, <laughs> uh, talent is, is that guitar? Guitar? His talent is guitar. Um, he has no fun facts. <laughs> Scribble chats? Is that a new game? I'm not playing that shit. I already down downloaded Wordle. What do you want from me? Crippled cats? Yes. I thought that said guitar. <laughs> Is this talent crippled cats or guitar? Are you crippling cats? <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> Have you seen that show? <laughs> Don't mess with cats on Netflix. Just make sure you saw it. 
Don't cripple cats. Um, that's cool. Cripple cats. How many legs? Like all of them or? Don't use them. Four cats, five eyes. <laughs> uh, this is supposed to be a comedy show. Uh, I'm not going to rip you about your <laughs> disabled cats. <laughs> he has disabled cats with three noses. Out of all five of them, only three noses. Now, is that per nostril? Like, are you coupling the nostrils together? <laughs> all right, long story short, he has a lot of cats. They're missing a lot of things that normal cats never have the things to have. What color are the cats? Okay. All right. Calm down. All right. <laughs> That's enough, sir. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Keep going. So all kinds of cats. Okay. An equal opportunity disabled cat owner. Are you, do you have business cards? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I take care of disabled cats. Here's my card. I like guitar. Thanks, uh, thanks for signing up to get roasted, Glenn. Let's give him a round of applause. We, <laughs> what a crowd we have today! Disabled cats, wreaths, craft rooms, bagpipes, and nothing. <laughs> Okay, I can work with that. And scrapbooking. Did I say scrapbooking? I don't know. Look, I'll tell you, scrapbooking is a weird one because it, it, it sets off this little trigger in the back of my head because my girlfriend does the words. Do you know what I mean? There's words all over the fucking house. Everywhere I look. Live, life, love, pray. Fall, lay down, kitchen, home, heart, sweet, dog, cat. I wouldn't doubt it. If I looked hard enough, I'd find Halloween somewhere on that wall. It's lots of words. And there's there's better things to do than just collect words. But she's, you know, into the words. So I just do what a good boyfriend does. I just go, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Like we go to the antique shops. Oh, honey, look at this. This is a, uh huh. And she buys it, and we get another home for the home to go in place of the other home we have. It was khaki colored, but this one's kind of cream green. So that's going to go up there on the wall instead of where the khaki one was. So that comes down. Where does this home go? Nowhere. It just goes into storage. I, I could literally make a dictionary in my storage room. There's so many words in there. It's unreal. It's, but like I said, that's what, that's what you're supposed to do. If you're a good spouse, you just kind of go with the flow, whatever. I don't care. Just get the words, whatever. And if y'all looking for cheat codes to finding the perfect mate, to find that second part to your puzzle, the, the, your spouse, if you're looking for a cheat code, I got you covered. All right. And it's very simple. When you go on a date, Go straight to the bathroom and say, oh, I got to use the bathroom. Before y'all go anywhere, run to his bathroom. Go to use the bathroom. You don't have to really use it unless you have to use it. Then use it. But if you don't have to use it, don't use it. And you go into the shower or bathtub and you locate the shampoo. See how many shampoos and conditioners he has. That's the key to a successful relationship. If you go in there and you look and he has shampoo, conditioner, uh, beard oil, uh, hair treatment, foot treatment, ball soap, butt soap, bath bombs. If he's got, uh, if he's got more than one of those little rags or scrunchy things, questions, 
but that's not the guy for you. That's a good time. That's a good time. If he's well-maintained, go out on the town, use his card, have a good time. Not a keeper. The keeper, when you go into the bathroom and you find a giant 42 ounce bottle that's 12 in one, <laughs> butt lotion, ball lotion, uh, face slough or whatever it's called, conditioner, shampoo, body soap, face soap, eye, eye brightener. If it's a 12 in one, that's your guy. Cause that's the guy that's just gonna go, I don't care. All right, get it. I don't care. That's the guy. That's the guy that you're gonna want on the couch with you when you go to watch those shows. And when I say those shows, I mean those shows. Like anything with Chicago in it that has like five or six different versions of a Chicago. It's like Chicago Med, Chicago, uh, uh, y'all can name them, Chicago. Chicago Fire, Chicago PD, Chicago Hope. Uh, there's so many Chicagos. We get it. What's what's next? Chicago uh, Pediatric? Chicago Mobile Vet, Chicago uh, Kindergarten, Chicago Divorce Court. Like it's it's gonna get so bad with entertainment. It's like you're gonna be subject to like the worst TV because it's gonna be like a divorce court show. Uh, they're gonna have kids coming in instead of actual people. It's like, what kind of dilemma are they having on Chicago uh, divorce, kindergarten, whatever? It's gonna be Kyle coming in, you know, like do 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 do. Judge Joe Brown's gonna be up there. He's not doing anything. He'll be up there because he is the best. If you go to put him on a scale, there's Judge Joe Brown, Judge Judy, then all the other people. You know? But Judge Joe Brown would do it right because he's probably the best the best person behind there that does it with those terrible couples that get up there and they have problems. It's, it's literally like candy. It's like the best thing you can watch on TV at, uh, what, 9.30, 10 o'clock in the morning. That's when it comes on. Right before Wheel of Fortune, but not after Family Feud, somewhere around there. That's where you get that. And it's going to be like a little child coming in and just saying, uh, uh, Sarah had an apple. I, I took her apple and I ate it because I wanted the apple. Is it, Did he take your apple? And this could be a little girl like, yeah, he took my apple. I was going to eat it. I just didn't want to eat it just then. It's going to go back to just, whoop, he was going to eat it. Why'd you eat his apple? And then, you know, you get it. You get it, right? It's funny. It's a premise. It's open mic night, folks. Thank you. So, who's ready for another comedian? Because I'm ready for some water. All right. Now, this gentleman has been at the Funny Bone. He has performed for countless audiences. And uh, he's my ringer. I got him here for you today. He's going to come in and do some comedy for you. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Johnny Washa. Oh. <laughs> Good grief. Hello, hello. All, right. <laughs> All right, everybody. Let's make a little noise. Y'all been very quiet tonight. How are you? Nice. There, uh, up, 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 up. Oh, yes. Thank you very much. Okay. We're going to start off. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a little wobbly. You know, however, I did promise my uh, my sober self that I was actually going to tell you some shit tonight. So hang in there. You know, you, you guys have all been very quiet tonight. So I'm going to break the ice and try to make sure that you guys can relax a little bit. Okay, you ready? Here it is. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Okay, you can. Add, we're actually going to say that. Yes, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Give her applause for trying to applaud. Uh. All right. So look, yeah, I believe that comedy should be uh, diplomatic. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you two choices as to which set I'm about to do. All right? I'm going to tell you which ones I got. I have one set where I work in a pizza joint. I have another set where I was the victim of a bomb threat. Yeah. So we're going to let you decide. Pizza joint? Bomb threat? Ah! All right. You've twisted my arm. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Uh, I'm having an unusual day today because I was watching TV. Oh my God, I'm still holding on to two beers. I was watching TV and, uh, you know, 
pop it up if you're one of those people that will see a movie for the 4,000th time just because you love it and you can't turn the TV. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Everybody's like that. You know, like they're, and it doesn't even matter if they're good. You know, if it's in your heart, you're going to watch that fucker. It's going to happen every time. You know, uh, like uh, Roadhouse. Yeah. Roadhouse, Roadhouse people. Yeah. Roadhouse is a piece of garbage. <laughs> But it's my piece of garbage, you know. It's the worst written, harmless, horribly. Oh my God, it's atrocious, you know. It's a, it's the sort of thing that'll steal your soul from you. It's just that bad. But, um, but I, looking through all the channels today, I saw another one that isn't just a movie that I can't turn off, but it's one that has a really intense memory for me that comes with it. And that movie, and clap it up if you like it, is Speed. Is there anybody here? Like, yes, 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 yes. That's just a. I fucking love speed. <laughs> you know, and, and I don't care who knows it. You know, so you know, Keanu Reeves. Oh my god. Okay, I'm. Here, let me just set the scene for you, since uh, since I'm talking to y'all and y'all want to know what I'm talking about. Uh, I used to manage a movie theater. Okay, um, it was a second run theater, which means you know we didn't get the movie when it first came out. It would come out. We would get it like months later. You know, and by the time I got it, you only had to pay like a dollar or two. To come see the goddamn movie, you know. So when I finally got Speed, he was already making John Wick. Okay, it was it was a it was a long period of fucking time, yeah. And uh, yeah, my my job as the manager was to run all of the projectors. We had four of them, and uh, I was I was in an office on the second floor that had this little window where I could open up the window and look down at all the pricks who work for me, see what they're doing. Yeah, check them out. You know, uh, so I could see the 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 doorman, all the concession people. And everything's going great, you know. It's been a really good night, and I'm up there, you know, running the projectors. And then the phone rings. My manager answers the phone, you know, and this guy gets on the phone and says, "I put a bomb in the building. You're all gonna die. Die, bitch, die." Now, I appreciate his brevity. That was nice, you know. He didn't really waste any time. However, she fucking freaked okay yeah you know, so she said oh my god johnny you know there's a bomb in the building i was like oh you're bullshitting me she was not yeah so the important thing to do as a manager is you've got to you don't mind if i step down from here again yeah, okay yeah the important thing to do as a manager is you want to set the tone you want to keep everybody calm you want to make sure nobody overreacts that's your job okay so i opened up the door and I was looking right at my little uh, my little door guy. He was a nice little black gay guy named Anthony. You know, so so I leaned down. I was like, mm. Anthony, get everybody out of the fucking theater right now. You know, and he looked at me and went, okay. And turned around to go and talk to the fucking theater. Here's how scared I was. You know, I managed to hit all four projectors, turn them off, run all the way down the stairs, and beat him to the first auditorium. That's how scared I was, you know, because I'm going to die. And the worst part, thing about it is I'm going to die at work. God damn it. You know, who the hell does that happen to? This sucks so much. You know, and I'm an idiot. So I was like, why aren't I just leaving? You know, what, what are they going to do about it? This place fucking blows up. <laughs> They're not really going to care. They can't get me. But no, I'm an idiot and I have a sense of responsibility. So I run into the first theater. I've now run all over the building. My shirt has come out of my pants. My hair is all over the place. There's a goddamn bomb in the building. Everybody's wondering why their movie has stopped and the lights have come up. But I ran in and I said, nobody panic. <laughs> There's a bomb in the building. <laughs> I didn't really get the entire second sentence out before they were already running over my face with their sneakers. So I'm laying there. I was like, well... That was idiotic. I guess I should probably change my approach for the next room. You know, because I gotta do this three more goddamn times. So I, you know, so they're they're running all over me. I was like, well, okay, but I, I at least get them out. They're like, what do we do? Get into the parking lot and get very far away from the building. Why? We have a bomb. When it blows up, it'll fucking kill you. <laughs> <laughs> so now would be a really great time for you to get the hell away from the building. I've never been through a bomb threat, but you know, that seemed right. You know, so, so yeah, so, you know, they, they run outside. I, I go into the next room with a slightly different program. I was like, hello. 
Sorry to have turned off your film, yeah. And I just was like, we have an emergency. That sounds much better, yeah. So I managed to get them out, but there are still people left in the building from the first auditorium that are very nervous. And I saw this one girl come out of the bathroom, deeply confused, and her boyfriend came and got her. So she's like, "Hey, what the hell's going on?" And I just pulled her out of the building. So you know, I, and this is what I do: I go all the way to all four auditoriums. I was like. I'm, I'm getting people out of here. This is good. You know, these people may live, you know, I'm feeling pretty good about it. And then I walk into, into the lobby and I, was, I turn around. All of my employees are still standing in the snack bar. I was like, what the fuck are you doing? You know, and, and they're like, well, you didn't say, the, yes, leave, 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 leave. It's a goddamn, are you retarded? Get out of here. Yeah. So they finally leave. You know, and I was just like, Jesus Christ, how stupid are you people? And then I look outside the front door. All of the people who left are now standing right in front of the glass doors looking at me. So I had to go in there and kick open the door. It's like, what part of fucking bomb do you not understand? The building's going to blow up. You're going to die. Yeah, I'm just move, 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 move. I finally managed to get them out of the damn building. And I'm, and I'm, I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, I may not die at work. Now I'm just not going to have a job, you know? So this is still going to suck for me, whatever happens, right? And here's a very important detail. Park this detail in the back of your mind because it's going to be very important later, right? I can see my manager way the hell down the shopping center. She's on a pay phone. Why the fuck is she using a pay phone? You know, who's she calling? Who in the hell does she need to talk to right now? You know, but that's what she's doing. And I'm saying, you idiot. You know, so I'm trying to keep everything cool. And I have a guy that walks up to me. Can I get a refund? I was like, at the $2 theater? <laughs> really? You want me to run back in there and get you a couple of singles? Yeah. <laughs> is that what you're expecting? Yeah, he was like, well, I want to get my money back. And I was like, what you need to do is to get the hell away from me before I kill you. You know, <laughs> if it's possible. I'm going to kill you twice, okay? So you need to back up and get the hell away from me. And I'm thinking to myself, Jesus Christ, this is so bad. You know, and, and it's ironic because I'm looking behind me, and in our lobby, it's it's Christmas time. So we have a big tree going on with all these festive lights going on. I was like, we're all going to die at happy Christmas time from the bomb. <laughs> you know? Well, what, what, how fucking sucky is this? Yeah, but it's happening, you know? So I'm, I'm standing there. I was like, well, I, I just, I, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do. And, uh, and I was like, you know what? Uh, my manager, I hope, is calling the bomb squad. That's probably what she's doing. As it turns out, I am correct. She calls the bomb squad. Sounds good, doesn't it? Doesn't it sound good? Bomb squad for bomb? Yeah? You guys are allowed to answer that question. Does it sound good? Oh, my God, wake up. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah, so the bomb squad is on the way. And I'm sitting there, I was like, well, you know, my whole life was slashing before my eyes, but I did get out of the building, but then the police show up. Thank God. And they're finally going to take this burden off of me and this, this fucking nightmare will end, you know? So the police walk in and they do a bunch of really important police looking shit, you know, nodding at each other. Yeah. All right. How are you? They walk by, you're the manager? Yes. You stay right there. I'm not fucking going anywhere. <laughs> you know, so he, he, they go in and they walk all over my building and uh, you know, they just walk in and out of stuff and all, and I'm waiting to see what's going to happen, you know, and uh, finally they, they come walking back out and they're nodding to each other. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. The manager, come here. I was like, yes. He goes, um, and this is when I got nervous because when police officers use a bunch of really long words, it means they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. <laughs> you know, he's trying to bullshit me, right? He's like, well, you know, we, uh, we took a turn around the facilities. Yeah. And no matter where we look, we didn't manage to find any kind of explosive device. So it's our opinion that, uh, everything here is going to be just fine tonight. I said, Oh, really? Well, that's fantastic. Well, thank you guys. He goes, yeah, he goes, uh, that's, that's our opinion. Of course. Um, we're not the bomb squad. Like, what? Because we're not the bomb squad. Like, well, then who the fuck are you? Why are you here? You're in police outfits. So you're not the bomb squad? They're like, no. And this gentleman told me something that all of you need to know. If there's ever a bomb threat, 
they don't call the bomb squad. They call the police. And then the police will decide if the goddamn bomb squad needs to come to the bomb threat. I don't know if you know that, but now you know. You know, so, so yeah, exactly. Yes, thank you. Yeah. I love you. Um, so, yeah, so, yeah, so he, he was like, well, you know, uh, would you feel better if we called the bomb? So, yes, call the goddamn bomb squad. What the fuck's the matter with you? You know, so he, he goes off and I was like, oh my God, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I, I'm, I'm so angry. And I leaned up against this car and I was like, I'm gonna take a few deep breaths and everything's gonna be fine. And right about that time, did you happen to get my refund while you were there? I was like, oh my fucking God. You know, what the hell is the matter with you? You know, and I was, and I'm flashing on the fact that I'm, I'm having a really great time that week before this happened because I really enjoy speed. Okay, Speed is playing in our theater. It's, it's everybody's going to go see that. That's the main movie. And there's one, this one really great part where Keanu, who at times can't act his way out of a paper bag, you know, is talking to a woman in an elevator, and she doesn't want to get. Y'all remember that? She won't get out of the elevator. Yeah. And then he stands up to her and says, and I kid you not, he goes, "Just take one step and grab my hand, just like that." What a horrible line. <laughs> However, I had it timed out so I could walk in the theater every time he said it. And I'd say, well, just take one. <laughs> so that, that was my favorite part of the fucking movie. And I was like, well, you know, uh, I, I, I guess, you know, um, everybody who's in there is going to have to get a refund this evening, which is fine with me, you know, because if they get a refund, it means that we all lived. So, which is the goal for me, yeah. you know? Yeah, ab absolutely. So, so I'm sitting there, I told the guy I'm not going to give him a refund. And then the real bomb squad shows up and they have stuff like dogs and ghostbuster shit. You know, it's got lights on it and all where they, where you tell they're coming in and doing an actual fucking job. And these guys won't buy the original place. <laughs> Total disrespect. I'm going to take a sip of this beer now. I can't hold both of these all day. Anyway, so the, the real cops, the real bomb squad won't buy them. It's just like, mother. they go and do their job. And, you know, they're really taking their time. They're being thorough. All, you know, the dogs are sniffing stuff running around. And, you know, everything's going fine until he, one of the cops kicks open the door. And he goes, hey, your Christmas tree. I was like, yeah. And he goes, how many presents are under it? And I said, six. He went, oh, well, okay, then. And then turn around. <laughs> Bastard. You know, so he, he goes back inside. Now, I have had my first communication with the bomb squad. That was the first time I talked to them. When I come back from that very brief conversation that I, and I didn't even walk inside. I get back out there and you didn't happen to get my refund while you were in there, huh, bro? And I was like, I will fucking die before I give you that refund. <laughs> I know it's just $2, but I'm willing to die for it. You know, I hope on your deathbed, you're really pissed about the $2 I didn't give you. You know, so I'm, I'm just, I'm so fucking angry. Now, finally, my boss shows back up just in time for the bomb squad people to walk outside and they're looking around and they're not doing all that pompous nodding and shit. They actually look like, yeah, okay. Yeah, I guess we looked at everything. And the guy says to me, he's like, uh, uh, come inside and talk to me for a minute. <laughs> where the bomb is. <laughs> you want me to go outside and talk to you where the bomb is? You know, I was like, uh, go fuck yourself. I'm not, no, no, there's a bomb there. I'm not going to die here. You know, he's, he's like, no, 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 I, I think everything's going to be okay. And this is when I had one of the most embarrassing moments of my life. Was like, he walked in and he was like, let's step into this little room right here, which happens to be the ticket office. That's where we answer the phone, sell the tickets, all that important shit. He goes, okay, here's the deal. We've looked all over. We've had our dog sniff and everything. We used all of our equipment and we do not think, we don't think that there's a bomb in this building. And then the telephone rang. And I was like, really? Okay. And I picked up the phone. I was like, think, and they were like, no! And they all dropped on the floor. I was like, oh, thank you for calling United Artists. What the phone? <laughs> what, what are you doing? Like, Hang out the phone. It's like, there's a customer. Like, Hang it out. I'm okay. They have guns. I hung it up. You know? I was like, what the hell's the matter with you? And this is an actual thing that happened to me. He said, you cannot use the telephone during a bomb threat. Why? Why the hell can't I do that? And he looked at me and said, a, a phone will send a signal when you're using it, and it will make the fucking bomb go off. And I looked at the head of the bomb squad and was like, 
that's bullshit. He said, oh, is that a fact? And I said, oh, God, I wish I could rewind my life at this point. And I literally said, yeah, that's right. Because in the movie Speed, <laughs> he was under the bus talking on the phone right next to the fucking bomb. <laughs> And everything got really quiet. You could just see him looking at me. He was like, sir, that may be the single stupidest thing I have ever heard. <laughs> I was like, so that's, not... he's like, no, the speed movie has it wrong. Yeah. We're the bomb people. You should probably listen to us. Bastard. Yeah. So, so now I'm feeling chastised, but it looks like we're going to live feeling pretty damn good about that. Right. So we're all beginning to breathe now. I've told that two dollars guy to go fuck himself. You know, so he's gone. I've and I kept that two dollars. I tell you right now, I'll spend a little candy later. Fuck that dude. But you know, so I'm feeling pretty good. I'm starting to relax, and I'm sitting up in the office, who feeling good when one of my smart ass employees goes off and finds an old motor to, to our projectors with a bunch of really important fucking wires on it. You know, and he walks into my office and goes, "Oh my god, Johnny, Johnny." And I screamed like a little girl because I thought he was holding the bomb. <laughs> they found me about two blocks away in front of an IHOP trying to call my mother on a payphone. You know? And that is what happened during my bomb threat. <laughs> yes. Any questions? <laughs> no? I covered it okay. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. Have a good night. No, Johnny, stay, stay. Johnny, stay. Johnny, Johnny stay. It's yes. his name. Yeah, sure. Uh, so. Hi. What? Oh. What's happening, baby? It's... Nothing much. So, why the two beers? Well, uh, <laughs> what's going on? I, I was thirsty. Yeah, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, One well, trip? Well, as you know, um, I only just started drinking beer this week. <laughs> and uh, these are the first two I've ever drank. It's a big night for me. And uh, that I want to thank y'all because y'all recommended. Yes. Give it up for this table over here. Recommend, recommended. This I was beer. there when it happened. God bless you. Wait, you know, it's, your, like, it's your honesty about what beer was the right one to take that is getting me drunk right now. And in that spirit of honesty, I just want to say that I really want to make love to that woman right there. Oh, <laughs> all right. She's in Christy, town. You're, you're damn attractive, Christy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry. Johnny's on his 15th beer. Too, um, too soon, Christy? Too, too, too soon? Yeah. Okay, go on. What kind of shampoo do you have? <laughs> I don't know. Let me, what kind of shampoo there you go. do I have? That's yeah? for sure a 12 and 1 right there. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. I, 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 didn't, I didn't hear everything you said. What did you say? <laughs> I, I'm at that point where any woman really will do. <laughs> you busy, Lenny? <laughs> yes? She's like, yeah. My God. She's like, uh, Striking no thanks, comedian guy. Uh, uh, Johnny, where Scotty, did that are you going to let that from? talk to me like this? She says, yeah. It's kind you of what, too, Scotty. That's why you got hired. Y'all don't have to tip Scotty. I'm just telling you right now. False. You definitely need to tip Scotty. Y'all make some noise for Scotty. Yeah, she's holding the place down. No <laughs> fooling. She's been working really hard tonight. And, and, and every time I bought a drink, I, I did tip her. So, you know. Uh, well, you know why Scotty's here? <laughs> I'll tell you why Scotty's here. Why? Long time ago, her father went to go see Speed. And somebody didn't give her a fucking refund. <laughs> he sounds like a dick. No. <laughs> Every Christmas, he's just in his rocking chair. <laughs> uh, that man never gave me my two dollars back. Yeah, yeah, you know what? Good. He was an asshole. <laughs> I hope I'm the last thing he thinks of before he dies. <laughs> <laughs> That's her father. I'm kidding. That's not her dad. But also, let's give it up one more time for Johnny. Make some noise for Johnny. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all. So y'all kind of get the idea what's going on, huh? Uh, yeah. Okay. 
Thanks, Mom. All right. Uh, we have one more comedian that's going to come up and do something for you. But until she comes up, I'm going to go ahead and talk to you a little bit. Give you guys a little one-on-one -on -one sesh with the Jeff, right? So if you're asking, this is probably polyester. I can feel it all over my upper body. Any crevice I have is going to have a rash tomorrow. Guaranteed. Uh, we do this for free. None of the comedians are getting paid. This is an open mic night. But one thing that I do here that's a little different than most open mic nights is I'm making sure we take care of our comedians. So as you can see, we have some QR codes posted up right there. There's also some... Uh-oh, that's probably... Was that sweat? Johnny, there's a puddle. Still on aisle two. Um, uh, dollar sign, Jeff Van Show, or at Jeff Van Show. And any donations you make to those are going to be split amongst the comedians. So if you do... Want to tip the comedians, we recommend that way because I'll split it evenly amongst all of them. Um, and that's for every show, not just tonight. That's any show we do. And I say any show we do because we're also going to do another night. We're going to be two nights a month currently, maybe more. Who knows? If y'all keep showing up, I'll keep trying to make you laugh. Okay? I'll buy another goofy shirt. I'll, I'll, I'll buy the finest Goodwill silks. And I'll make some wreaths. You know, I'll, I'll bring it all out. Um, but we're also doing a second show at Gilla Brewing. Gilla uh, Brewing Company? Yeah, that's what it's called. We're going to be there uh, second Thursday of every month. Uh, we recommend you stop by there, too. It's going to be like this, a little different. Michael Louisa from American Idol, he's going to be there and doing a after party. So you'll be able to come, have some drinks. We'll do the open mic comedy night, the lunchbox comedy night, and there'll be beer everywhere. Um, plenty of stuff to do while you're there. Enjoy comedy. Same setup, similar setup. And uh, then at the end, you're going to have an after show with American Idol contestants. That's pretty cool, right? There you go. That's two. And that one is in Gonzalez. Yeah. So that one is uh, also... Tell you what, there's two nights of comedy in Ascension Parish, and it's only because of you guys. So thank you guys so much for being here. Um, I'm going to try not to cry, but uh, I want to thank uh, all of the sponsors and everybody that came together. South 73 Lunchroom for putting on, for letting us do what we do. Thank you guys so much. Eat the Boot uh, has helped out tremendously. Uh, Bearded Events. Uh, Looking Glass Photo Booth Company over there. That's like a state-of-the-art photo booth. For those that do not know, that photo booth actually travels. It's not traveling today, but that top part can come out in mobile pictures at a wedding or an event, which is... What? Maybe at Gila we're going to try mobile. If y'all lucky, we're going to try mobile. But um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, thank you guys so much for, for making this happen because... This idea has been in my head for a while. Um, you can ask Jill, who uh, one of the owners here at South 73, a million years ago, I was like, I want to do a podcast. I want to do a comedy night. I don't know when it ever will happen, but that's what I want to do. And the minute she was talking about, yeah, I kind of want to do a late night thing. Here you are. And it clearly it works. We got like a, I'll go ahead and say sold out crowd because we got a lot of seats filled. So I'm going to say it's a sold out crowd comedy show. If you were here, you'd know that there's people trying to get in. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. We're just waving them off to maybe next time, you know? Um, and this is an exclusive menu we put together too. I hope you guys liked it. The egg roll flight is one of a kind. Uh, it was definitely something to try out. Uh, if you haven't had the South 73 burger, it makes a noise for the burger. If you had the burger. <laughs> Top five burger, top five burger, bar none in Louisiana for me. My personal top five, it's in there. Um, and who had the quesadillas? Those were pretty tasty too. And the, the queso dip, I don't know how they do it. I talked a little bit about that queso dip, but the, the consistency of it is my favorite thing in the world. It's, it's like, you know, when you make like that Velveeta queso at home and it's just so thick, your, your chip's gone when you like go to dip it. 
And so then you get a spoon and get the chip and the dip and it's too much dip. Not here. You know, you're not wrong. If I had a straw, this is why I'm on a diet, folks. I'm on a diet. I can't eat any of it, but I smelled everything tonight and it smelled amazing. Even the beers, I could smell them. It's like a sixth sense whenever you're on a diet. You're like, there's cookies five miles away. Someone's making sugar cookies. It's it's crazy, but um, thank you guys so much for being a part of it. And uh, y'all y'all made y'all made my dreams come true, man. Thank you so much. Um, don't don't clap. You gonna be cut it out. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, our next comedian, also from the Funny Bone. You've seen her at Phil Brady. She's been at the station. She's a very talented young lady. Give it up for Jen. I'm not sure if it's sweat or beer, so dodge it. There you go. <laughs> There's Jill, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, everyone. I'm actually Jenna, not Jen. He's been drinking. How y'all doing tonight? We feeling good? We doing good? Yes. We're going to turn this up to a little bit to a rated R. Just putting it out there. If you're uncomfortable with this, I apologize, but this is the kind of comedy that I do. I don't, he was clean, I am not. So, first thing first, do you know how many names men have for their penises? Anybody? Higher. Way higher. Another, anyone else? Higher. 1,359 names. I Googled it because I have no life. I was curious. But have you noticed men always get the really hot names for their dick? They get the good names like Anaconda, Jose Grande, God. Women, on the other hand, we get names like Coochie. Muskrat, beaver, beaver. That is a mammal with a flat ass, buck teeth, and gnaws on wood. What man wants us to tear up his dick? Tell me this. And that's the kind of names that we get. It is very unfair. I, I just don't get it. I really don't. But... We are not educated about how to make women's, I always like the term cunt, actually. Oh, he's got it. He likes it. It's sharp. It's to the point, And you know it will get the fucking job done. I love that word. Most people hate it, but I figure if we twist it around, it could be used to a perfect advantage. But as far as it goes, um, my life with sex has always been between a horror movie and a musical. Say, Les Mis. Sad but true. Let me give you an example. I was 16 in Louisiana, and I worked at McDonald's with a man, a guy, not a man, he was 17, Raul. Does that not just drip sex? Raul. And I lived a block away, and I was totally infatuated with him. I wanted to see where this might go. And one day, he offered me a ride home. Now, I'm only a block away. I can walk. I do have two working legs, but I was excited well where this was going. So I said, sure. And I got, uh, we, he, we got in the car, and he's driving, old ladies watering the lawn, children playing in the front yard. And he parks the car in front of my house, turns to me, and says the words, every 16-year-old longs and waits her entire freaking life to hear. How about a blowjob? <laughs> Very romantic, but I'm like, okay, you know, maybe this is an experience I should experience because I was curious. And I've heard girls talking about blowjobs and sex and all that. I'm like, I'm going to go through with this. Plus, I don't want to get the reputation that I'm a tease. I really was, but he didn't know that. But as far as it goes, I'm like, sure, what the hell? 
he unzips his pants. He pulls it out. And it's like this. Wait, crooked, and uncircumcised. For a 16-year-old, I am nothing against uncircumcised, but for a 16-year-old, it was a traumatic event because I thought for a good year that this is how it was supposed to look. No one explained this to me. But I was still curious and I wanted to see where this would go. I wanted the experience that everyone else was talking about. So I go down. I bend over. And I start going at it. And then I see blue and red lights in the rear view. This cop stopped his car, walked up to the window while Raul is still trying to zip up his pants, which shouldn't have been that difficult with how small he was, but I don't know. Maybe Ben's pants are different. But as far as it goes, he he knocks on the window and he says, ma'am, true story. Do you realize that oral sex is illegal in Louisiana? No. I do now. Son of a bitch. My mom's going to find out. And then he poses the next question, which was very traumatic to me. Ma'am, what would Jesus do in your situation? Being 16, I came up with this thought and I'm like it was the only thing that was running through my head and I panicked. Pray for the second coming? (laughs) Yes. Traumatic events and I'm always doing traumatic events and as far as it goes um, again 16 years old and a friend of mine who was 18 bought me my first vibrator. It was silicone and it vibrated to all the right parts. And I, it, was, it was a Saturday, and I got it, and I, I wanted to try it, but I didn't want my, my family to hear. I was very curious where this was going to go, because I'm like, this is another new experience. It can't end badly. I'm working my way. I turned the shower on so you couldn't hear the vibrations. I laid on the floor, and I had the biggest freaking orgasm I ever had. It was amazing. So I turned off the shower and I stepped out, closed the door. I'm sorry, I didn't close the door. I stepped out and closed it a crack and went to the living room. I was talking to my mom. My brother was there. And I mean, my grandmother was there. My grandfather was there. And I'm just talking and regular 16 year old self. Nothing about sex, but just regular 16, how school's going and everything. And my mom stops me. I'm like, what's wrong, Mama? Can you explain this? And she points behind me. I'm like, "Uh, okay. My damn dog (laughs) came out from that damn bathroom gnawing on a going vibrator that was loud as shit. And I'm like, okay, how do I respond to this? And she's like, can you explain this? Um, I pop my cherry and I'm like, uh, traumatic, traumatic. It always happens like this. And as far as it goes, I'm like trying to think, trying to think, trying to think. And I'm like, it always happens. Everybody either figures things out and I'm doing clumsy things and all that. And it really is a hard life to lead. And it was at that moment at 16 with my dog walking out with that viber that I realized I'm going to be poor as hell because I want to be a fucking comedian. (laughs) That shit was hilarious. My grandmother was stooped with no words, which never happened. My brother was like, that's all you got? I'm like, okay, fine. But hold on. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm checking. Okay, sorry about the notes, guys. I haven't performed in 10 years except recently, so I'm trying to get back in sweet things. If you've never seen a comedian with notes, this is what it looks like. Oh, we all do it. We all do it. Yep. 
now as far as it goes i grew up and i had a semi-normal life i i again experiences but i decided to try out for america's got talent but being the comedian that i am i wanted to get certain attention not dress up like a hooker or anything but i wanted to see a song that really touched my heart but changed the words just a little bit has anyone here seen dream girls Jennifer Hudson, one night only. Oh, this is gonna be bad. <laughs> okay, basically, it's a love song about how she is gonna spend one night only and not have her boyfriend leave. Now, I decided to change the lyrics a little bit to one hour only, the hooker version. I apologize in advance. And this is how it went. You want all my love and my devotion. You want my love and soul right on the line. I have no doubt I could turn you on. The only trouble is you really don't have the cash. You've got one hour only, one hour only. That's all you can afford. One hour only, I'll be a perfect whore. In the morning, all your cash will be gone. Now I'll be hurrying along, making my way down Plank Road. Forget about all your troubles tonight. I swallow your love. Oh, apparently, they were not impressed. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I have right now. Thank you so much. Good job. Let's give it up for Jenna. Yes. Now you get it. It's a lunchbox. You never know what you're going to get. Maybe mom gave us a snack pack. Maybe she didn't. You never know what you're going to get. That puddle is fierce. I, Johnny, I swear that came from your brow, dude. Because it does not look like natural beer spill. Yeah, it's okay. I was looking for an on switch, but this is the good microphone that I spent extra dollars on. So it doesn't have one. So how are y'all doing? Are y'all having a good time? Not bad, right? Well, we're doing jokes. We're having fun. Uh, y'all ready for an intermission? Anybody need to go get drinks or y'all want to keep going? It's up to y'all. Keep going? All right. All right. Well, this is a little thing I put together the other day. And I'm going to sing for you, too. I'm kidding. I'm not singing. I'm not singing. <laughs> let it go. Let it go. I have kids. All I know are Disney tunes. So... I'm going here for my notes, so bear with me here. Um, what I do, instead of writing them down, I message myself. I have a contact in my phone that's actually my name, and I just talk to myself. Oh, who? Oh, yeah, yeah, you get me. You complete me. Um, this one. This is basically what I'm doing. I'm going to do a little segment, and we're going to call it Love Letters, right? These are little things in life that you do because you love your spouse. All right. All right. Just to give you an example, this is what I wrote. I wrote this down because I thought it was funny, so we'll see what happens. Love is pooping with the door open, right? Oh. <laughs> Not not talking, not talking with the door open, just pooping with it open. You're comfortable. They can walk in if you want. Don't kick up a leg and have a conversation. I'm not ready for that. I love you, but I don't love you, you know? <laughs> I forgot I was going to even say this, but love is letting her just put fucking words all over the house. We covered that. We covered that one. Uh <laughs> Love is just going with it. Not just going with it, but 
when you're cut off mid sentence and they add something completely different than what you were going to say and you just go with it anyway, that's love. You're trying to explain a story and you get halfway through it and then she's like, oh, you're talking about trash cans. I was like, yeah, exactly. Trash cans. Exactly. That makes sense to you? Cool. I'll go with it. Not a problem. <laughs> love is not getting up when the cat is on you. You know, anyone that's owned a cat can relate and understands that when a cat is on you, you have to completely change your plans for the day. That's just literally how it goes. The only option, I wrote this down too, the only option you have is the cat taco. What is the cat taco? Well, the cat taco is when you quietly and politely and patiently moving on a sloth level, wiggle the blanket to the point where the cat's in the middle and see if you can move them lightly. And you get them almost to the floor. You're almost there. You're almost free. And he's like, oh, what? And just gets up and goes. And you're like, well, this was pointless. Um, let's see. <laughs> uh, yeah, I ain't saying that one. Uh, <laughs> I haven't been drinking. I'm going to keep that one to myself. Uh, Okay, okay. So, all right. This one's a story. Accurate. Accurate to a fault. There is a little embellishment. Just a little. But. Oh. Go ahead, sis. Come on in. All right. Uh, here's, here's a. <laughs> I forgot what I was doing. I didn't do it. Okay, so here's the story, right? None of y'all really know this, but I'm a DJ. There's a few of you that know that I'm a DJ. I DJ weddings, I DJ parties, whatever. And I DJ from here all the way to Mississippi, all the way to Florida. I had an event where I had to go to Mississippi. And that's like a two-hour drive. If, if I'm not playing on my phone while I'm driving. Sorry, Mom. If I'm not doing that. It's about a two-hour drive, right? So roughly, I got to go from here all the way to there, set everything up, get ready for whatever I'm about to do. You need a Kleenex? You, okay. You're fine. It's uh, Johnny's phone was going off all morning earlier during his set. So. <laughs> well, now I don't have feelings. Uh. So I DJ, right? I travel. So I got in my car. I was heading to travel uh, the two hour drive. I forgot to use the bathroom and I didn't gas up. So I'm about halfway there. Stop at a gas station. I go to pee and I go to buy some gas, pay for it. And while I'm at the register, they have these gigantic Kit Kats, not like regular Kit Kats, like king size, but it's called like a big cat. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Oh. They had like a regular pack, but big cat. Dick used to, it was just a single bar of big cat. This was like a three pack. And I'm like, huh, my fat ass is fine that. So I was starving because I was just driving. I wasn't planning on eating until I got to the actual place, got set up. I was going to eat, but this Kit Kat was called on my name. So I bought it on the way, on the way back to the interstate. I got into my car. I have that Kit Kat put it on the dashboard. It wasn't going to the seat. It was going right to the dashboard because I ain't going far. So we get out. I pull out to the uh, the road, and you better believe I stripped that Kit Kat like it was nobody's business. I stripped that Kit Kat like it was Channing Tatum on Magic Mike. I stripped that Kit Kat like it was prom night. You know what I'm saying? I could do these all day. Like I stripped that Kit Kat like uh, like it wanted to hear about my Star Wars collections and talk about her daddy issues. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know what I'm saying. You don't have to nod, fellas. It's fine. Anyway, I took the wrapper off of that Kit Kat and I shoved the whole damn thing in my mouth like a G because I was about to drive. I wasn't going to have time to have chocolate melting on my damn hand. So I put it all in my mouth. I, I crammed that whole ass Kit Kat in my mouth immediately. You know, I heard you. She said that's what she said. That was a good one. <laughs> I crammed it in my mouth, right? It was insane. 
the chocolate, it was hot, it was melted. I, it looked like I rolled around in the bed with Amber Heard. Like there was shit all over my face. It was everywhere. So I, without even skipping a beat, like I just go to get on the interstate. I have chocolate all over my face. I'm using my elbow, trying to turn the wheel. I don't know what I'm doing at this point because it's it's been a minute since I had a Kit Kat, and those things are a lot of chocolate. The bottom layer on that is pretty much a Hershey's, and they just throw Kit Kat on top. Nuts. And I can embellish on that because I haven't had one in a long time. I'm eating chicken and rice. Thank you, Brandy, my trainer. I can, I can tie my shoes without breathing heavy, so thank you. That's for you. Uh, so I have this chocolate all over my face. I'm going to get on the interstate. Then all of a sudden I see like cop lights behind me. Now I didn't do anything. I'm buckled up, but anyone that's anyone knows anytime you see cop lights, it's immediately, it's just like, a, Oh shit. What did I do? And you just look around like, oh, the seatbelts on this. Uh, what did I do? And I, I, I think he was just trying to pass me Oh, now thinking back, I think he was trying to pass me and it was like a, uh, it was a state trooper. I mean, it was a local PD. Local PD pulled behind me, and I'm like, okay, this is fine. This isn't, this isn't that bad. I have a friend. I can probably work this ticket. I can probably get out of this. Not a big deal. Then he cut his lights off, and he just kept going, and behind him was a state trooper. And I'm like, shit. I was cop blocked. It's insane. Thank you. Thank you. That was a joke. I appreciate it. You know. So, uh, how about airports, huh? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So, um, this is comedy night. I hope you guys are having a good time. Uh, thank you. Thank you. It's, uh, it's also been maybe 12 years since I've done comedy. Uh, last time I did it was at Phil Brady's, and I had hair. There's, <laughs> there's proof. Somewhere in the internet webs, there's proof. I had a whole head of hair. So um, thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, you want to come back up for me? Y'all want to see Johnny again? I think they want to hear about the pizza. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I've missed you all. Hello. Johnny Worsham, everybody. Make some noise. Okay. No beer? No, no, I'm, I'm, I've, I've had, trust me, I've had enough beer. <laughs> You're a really good looking man. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, so here's, here's the situation. I'm not going to name the place, okay? But my, my brother has opened his own pizza joint. He's got his own pizza store. You know, uh, it's in a big uh, shop, strip mall. You know, with all the windows are made out of glass in the front. And he wanted me to come by and work there because he wouldn't have to fucking pay me. You know, so, <laughs> and because I'm an idiot, I said yes. Yeah. You know? However, here's the great thing about being the brother of the person running the place. You can pretty much do whatever the hell you want. You know, what's he going to do? Fire me. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. So my, my whole thing is I'm, I'm the guy who works the cut table. Does anybody know what the cut table is in a pizza joint? Why am I bothering to tell you that? You don't give a shit. Anyway, the, the, the cut table is exactly what it sounds like. It's the table where you cut the pizza. Yeah. You know? Okay. The shitty stand was really pissing me off. I, anyway. Yeah. So that's the, the, the pizzas come out. You've got, you've got a big knife and bam, 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 you know, and you cut the pizza up. And because I'm a total prick, you know, I decided that when I cut the pizza, I was going to do it like I'm in Kung Fu theater. You know, so every time, oh, I got I got <laughs> my brother hates me anyway. <laughs> But I'm having a great time, you know, because I'm really good with the uh, w with the pizza, and I'm I'm really quick with it. And the best part is, see, here's the thing: some of you women may not have noticed this, but I'm a very old man, you know. And uh, a lot of the young ladies who work there are really great looking. And uh, if I even touched them, 
it would kill me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> However, I can look all I want. Yeah. And we had a young lady. Oh my God. She was so short. She had to climb up on top of this little uh, chair in order to answer the phone. It was fucking adorable. Anyway, you know, and she was built like uh, a lady that you would have seen on like a, a Conan the Barbarian magazine. Big legs, big arms. Big, oh, oh, she was perfect. Yeah. She's the way I want to die. Yeah. So, yeah, so I get to sit there and watch her where she's answering the phone. Ah, da, da, da. Yeah, loving every goddamn second of it. You know, so I'm having a good time cutting up the pizza, and then it happened. Um, this truck pulls into the parking lot, and that's a generous way of putting it. He skid into the parking lot. It was a huge truck, a giant truck. You know, I have a tiny dick truck. You know, <laughs> it, it was it was a big fucking truck, and he pulled in sideways. <laughs> And, of course, everybody stops because the whole place is made out of glass in the front, so you can see everything happening in the parking lot. And I thought, wow, what a big truck. Because I'm original like that. You know? <laughs> so, anyway, this this uh, behemoth gets out of the truck. He's the biggest son of a bitch I've ever seen in my life. This big guy gets out. He blots out the fucking sun when he gets out. I was like... <laughs> I'm, you know, and I'm, you know, I'm so shocked that I'm actually cutting the pizza slower. I'm like, ah, da, da, da. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, he's a huge guy. I just remember being impressed and thinking, well, oh, big, big fella. But, you know, anyway, he opens up the door, looks at the girl and says, hey, bitch, get your fucking ass out here right now. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. So she hops down, you know, and she follows this giant man outside. Now, obviously, I'm keeping an eye on this now. You know, so here I am cutting it up, you know, but I'm watching him. I don't know what they said to each other. I have no idea what sort of interaction took place. All I know is he didn't like whatever it was she did say, and he reached back all the way from Alabama and beat the fuck at her, just knocked her the hell out, you know, and we were all in shock, you know, because who does this, particularly to a little girl? And, then, and that's when I had to jump into action, you know, because at this point in the story, everybody, there are two things that you need to know about me. Number one, I am a real Southern gentleman. And if you think you're going to put your hands on a woman while I am standing there, you are sadly fucking mistaken. And number two... This man was going to hurt me very, very badly. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> but, you know, apparently I was committed to getting my ass kicked. <laughs> so, so here's, I was like, okay, I got to go do something. So I leave the cut table and coming to the door and I was like, oh, you know, what would a tough guy do? Because I don't know. You know. I was like, a tough guy would kick the door open. Yeah, I'll kick the door open and then I'll yell something you know you know before he kills me you know so i i kicked open the door i was like hey motherfucker you know and ladies and gentlemen give this the response it deserves this big giant man looked at me and took a step back from me yes So I said, oh, we got a problem. He goes, oh, we don't have a problem. Like, oh, oh, no, motherfucker, we got a problem. He was like, I don't want a problem. I said, well, you've got one. You know, so I start, I'm, I'm feeling good. And the great thing about it is, once again, the entire front of the store is made out of glass. <laughs> Everybody is watching me back this giant motherfucker up. Holy cow. I have rarely had a hard on like that. You know? <laughs> this was a special moment for me. So I backed him up and was like, what the fuck is the matter with you? Like, oh, I'm sorry, man. I was like, no, you're not sorry yet. You're going to be sorry. You put your ass in this goddamn truck and get the fuck out of here. Or I swear to God, I'm going to kill you. He jumped in the truck and took off. Oh, my God. <laughs> what the fuck is he doing? <laughs> I had no idea, but it worked. I was like, oh, yeah. Everybody just saw that. Yeah. So I got to walk back in. I stop and help the girl back up because that looks classy. <laughs> you know, and I open up the front door, 
so I can receive my applause from everybody. I walk in and they all laugh at me. I was like, well, what the fuck? You know, my brother walks up and goes, Johnny, um, you didn't have to bring the pizza knife with you. <laughs> so apparently I kicked open the door and was like, hey! <laughs> so I'm in therapy now. And um, I just wanted to share that with all of you good people. You folks have a good night. Thank you. Good job, Johnny. Don't yes. don't leave. Don't leave. Okay, what am I doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's, uh, what's going on? I can ride out. Is it you? No. Oh, no. <laughs> Is there anybody who wants to do comedy? In yeah, yeah. We got somebody is signing up right now. But while he's signing up, I'm going to do a little interview with you, Johnny. Oh, oh, oh well, I'm, I'm sure you guys got bated breath waiting on that shit. Okay, what what we got? <laughs> Uh oh, there we go. Right now, we're just going to talk to Johnny for a sec. Uh, so Johnny, how long have you been doing comedy? Uh, about twelve years. Now, Johnny, for those of you that do not know, but are somehow like he looks a little bit familiar. He has performed multiple times at the Ascension Community Theater. So if you've seen him there, that's probably where you've seen him. He's uh, an award-winning comedian. All stuff. Yes. <laughs> award-winning actress. Uh, yeah. Don't judge me. <laughs> Sometimes we wear take. dresses. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk later. Show me your gams. <laughs> so, yeah, Johnny's been performing all over Ascension, so I'm so happy we were able to scoop him up for uh, this little comedy thing. So It wasn't hard. <laughs> <laughs> he lives outside by the dumpster, so I'm glad he was able to make it in. If y'all have any leftovers, y'all just keep it on the table. <laughs> all your styrofoam plates, please leave them. <laughs> They're great for insulation. Uh, also, we've been getting tips in. Thank you guys so much for the tips. These guys are going to be able to go to Taco Bell tonight. Yes! Thank you guys so much for that. We really appreciate it. Um, in addition to all the stuff Johnny's done, Johnny's also uh, a father. He has a... Oh, 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 oh got it. Sorry, I, I thought I was getting my picture. Taken. I guess we're not talking about my fucking kids anymore, huh? Yeah, that's, that's over. <laughs> He's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> what? All right, moving right along. Why, Why would you do that? Uh, <laughs> So Johnny has a good time with me. If you see me doing comedy, usually you see him to my either left or my right side or lifting me up. Whatever Sometimes it takes. in the back. Sometimes the mic stand is not adjustable and he'll come up and just hold me for a little bit. <laughs> it's a real good guy. <laughs> uh, in addition to that, we did a play. Speaking of uh, playing a, a female, remember when I was the, the ugly girl in high school and yes. I had to wear a prom dress? Yes, I do. <laughs> Again, therapy. <laughs> You're the one with therapy. Should see my dress collection. Oh my God. Um, but yeah, we're having a good time. Thank you guys so much. One more time, let's give it up for Johnny Washa. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. All right, coming back to the stage, make some noise, Jenna. hotter than me i'm like i saw her come to the door i'm like i want to be her dog just tell me to sit stay roll over i'll do any of it i'm actually pansexual so i'll sleep with anybody okay do we have any millennials here Generation X, Millennials, 
Nobody knows what that means. This is another one that's going to go very badly. All right, I'll talk about something else then. Okay, as far as it goes, um, I live with my best friend. No, we are not intimate. She's my best friend of 11 years. She knows better than anyone. And we decided we were going to get two dogs. And we found the two dogs. One was a beagle, pretty decent size, very overweight. And the other one was this itty-bitty, looks like a puppy, cute-ass dog. And she was adorable. And apparently the owner had committed suicide and they did not want to separate these dogs. And I get that. So we fell in love. We fell so in love with these dogs. So we adopted them. And it, the, it wasn't three days later that we realized our fence is not holding properly for Sophia, the little female dog. And I'm like, she wasn't trying to run away or anything. So we thought we had a little bit of time. Now picture this. I woke up in my nightgown, no bra, no shoes, and I was drinking coffee out in the backyard with the dogs. And I hear um, Copper bark. And I'm like, okay, why is he barking at the fence? Is someone here? Sophie had gotten through the fence. No bra, in my nightgown, no shoes. And I open the fence and I'm like, Sophie, and she takes off. She runs all the way down throughout the entire neighborhood. I am running. This is a girl who is a plus size girl. I don't run unless something is sh fucking chasing me. If you see me running, it's an emergency. There is a dinosaur behind me. But I had promised I would take care of this dog. So I'm running to the neighborhood. There are people laughing at me. People who are taking pictures. Not one person's not to stop and ask, do you need help? And she crosses Sharp Road. I don't know if y'all know where Sharp Road is. No. It's a main street and it, there's a park across the street and it's a main street. She passed car after car, not getting run over into this park. And I'm like, okay. So I run through Sharp Road and I finally corner her in the baseball field and I pick her up and this woman is filming. I said, you better not be Facebook timing me, bitch. <laughs> no, honey, YouTube. And that's when I cut my hair. <laughs> yes, indeed. I j just traumatic stuff. And I saved the dog. I carried that dog all the way back home. And she was safe and we fixed the yard. So as far as it goes, we are good to go. But as where was I going with that? I don't remember. This is a lot of drugs. Do not do drugs, people. That is one thing that I can say. We're going to go a little R-rated again. Um, I am an addict. I am 30, day, 30 days clean of alcohol, marijuana, and drugs. Thank you. Thank you. The reason why I tell you this will make sense in just a moment. So, uh, when I was still partying hard, I had a girlfriend. Her name was Lauren. Now, when we first started seeing each other, we were not girlfriends. We were fuck buddies. And the sex was great. Add a little bit of coke in there. The sex was amazing. But as far as it goes, um, we woke up one morning and... We didn't have a clue what had happened the previous night. We had done a lot of drugs, a lot of alcohol. And as far as it goes, I'm like, okay, Lauren, you got to answer this question for me. She's like, what? She's not quite awake. There is police, police caution tape on the floor in our bedroom. Where did it come from? I have no idea. I'm like, okay. There is a, I open the bathroom door, there is a feral cat hissing like a godlike demon. And I close the door and, she, and I ask, where did the cat come from? And she's like, I have no idea. I'm like, okay. I go into the living room, which is the next room through it. And there is a pink vibrator in the VCR. Yes, I'm that old. And I'm like, it's stuck in there. I tried to pull it out. It started vibrating. It wasn't coming out. I'm like, what the hell did we do? 
And she's like, Jenna. And she lifts her hand. There's a handcuff on her left arm. That was mine. We figured out after 10 minutes of figuring it out. And we got a key and we unlocked her. But the reason, ladies and gentlemen, we do not do drugs and drive with drink is because of the fact that the police came to the door and said we had fraternized a house that had murder happened and we took some of the tape. Not one of my finer moments. And they're like, what were you doing? And I'm like, the best sex ever. <laughs> but no, I, I, I'm good now and I'm, I'm working the program and everything. And, but one thing that I do realize is we're always chasing happiness, joy, all that that goes with it. And as far as it goes, you have to find joy and happiness and everything. So I keep my stories real up here. Everything you've heard is 100% true. And sadly, I apologize because y'all heard all of it. But as far as it goes, it's like, you know, we have to catch the moments and realize that happiness is fleeting and enjoy the moments that we have. Now, the one moment that I do not enjoy, and can I use you? I'm going to go in your bubble. I promise I'm not going to hurt you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's see if any of y'all know this trick. I heart you, Jenna. I heart you. Thank you. Now, what would, ladies, what would you think that was saying? I love you, right? I thought that too. And this woman was the epitome of who I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. And she, I told her, I love you too. She would always do that. And I told her for the first time after six months that I love you too. She broke up with me the next fucking day on text message. Another travesty. So I have learned that you got to figure out and pick your moments and pick the people that you're with. You choose your own families. You choose your own friends. You have a choice. Be around positive plus people. And if you're like me and Johnny, pick on those people and make sure you make fun of them. <laughs> keep it real. Keep it funny. Funny keeps us from crying. Thank you so much, y'all. I had a wonderful time. Yes. Well, I love you. Give her a round of applause. Excellent. Excellent. All right, let's have some fun with my crowd, huh? I got a whole crowd here. Let's have some fun, right? Let's do some impersonations. Who wants to hear something? Who we got? Go for it. Oh, oh, okay. I'm going. I'm going. Awesome copy. Amber Heard is a weird one. It. What did you say? Anybody got some peanut butter? Is that what you said? I have here. This is how I hear at home, too. My girlfriend is, like, saying a whole sentence. I catch three words, and most of it's, like, the, the adjectives. Not the, not the shit that matters. It's the stuff that doesn't matter. Amber Heard stuff is weird, right? It's just generally weird. She's a terrible actress to begin with. Let's be honest. No, nothing has been good that she's really been in. And the ironic part is Johnny Depp was there, and, you know, Johnny Depp, has a portfolio he has done some shit right so this whole trial makes it really weird for uh one person and one person only it's going to be hell for the person that tries to make the tv movie i'm just saying it we're all thinking it it's going to be hell for that dude because somebody's got to hire a johnny depp probably somebody from friends let's be honest they'll just slide him right in here he'll play johnny depp give him whatever and uh, that's all he has to do for two hours. The other person, that's going to be the work. You have to play a terrible actress pretending to be sad on a courtroom trial while also being guilty. So it's like you have to get some fucking Glenn Close shit for Amber Heard, which is baffling to begin with. Like, I'm curious how they're even going to accomplish that. They're going to try. It's probably going to be like Lady Gaga or somebody. Watch. <laughs> but, you know, it is what it is. The trial is hilarious. Um, Y'all like accents? Oh, I got something funny. Here's a joke. 
Uh, what uh, what do y'all think it was like for uh, R Rocky when uh, Sylvester Stallone was going in for Rocky? How do you think that went, the, the whole board meeting? Because, you know, he wrote it, he directed it, he acted in it. So it has to be like him just showing up and going, Hey, I got an idea for a movie. I can act in it and direct it. Just cut me a check. That's strange. And they said yes. That's the strange part. He fought for it. Good for him. But you know what's bullshit? The new Batman movie. Right? <laughs> I know. Everybody hates me for it, but hey, it is what it is. I didn't like that he wasn't gravelly. My Batman has a gravelly voice. He goes, I'm Batman. And then I know he's Batman versus his Bruce Wayne, who's like, I'm not Batman. Got it. There's a separation there. I like the gravelly. I like the uh, Christian Bale. That Batman was a cool Batman because he was doing what? I'm Batman. Michael Keaton, too. He's also good. But he also did the, I'm Batman. Yeah. We get it. He's Batman when he does the voice. He's Bruce Wayne when he does not. Here's the fun part. What happens when uh, Bruce Wayne goes into a board meeting and he's got like COVID? Right? He's not talking very well, right? So he's sitting there and he's like just chilling, coughing, whatever, hawking, horking, whatever we call it. And the board meeting's like, Bruce, do you have anything to add? And he's like, no, I'm fine. The, the only person that probably turns around is the intern that's like, holy shit, it's Batman. It's a weird time we live in. We got a lot of comic book movies, but also we still don't have a Western Sizzler. What the hell? I promise you this, America. I'm running for Senate next year. And if you elect me, we're going to bring back the Sizzler. Make some noise for the Sizzler. All right. Well, we have a fresh new comedian coming up to the stage for you. He popped in, and I, I can't wait to hear what he's got for us. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for the talented Chris Fades. All right. How y'all doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and walk around with it. You know, how y'all doing? How y'all doing? Central Parish, we ain't here tonight. I'm just gonna let y'all know, fair warning, this is just my second time being in front of a crowd like this. You know what I'm saying? So, I, 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 I stop the clapping, stop the fucking clapping. I might fuck this up. I might fuck this up. Don't make me nervous, goddamn. But long story short, man, I'm a barber right there across from Snow's at the Blend Guru by Nick's Bar. Yeah, I work right there. So if y'all won't see me, y'all need a trim, shape up, line up, anything like that, come see me. Uh, I'm a barber man, two kids. I'm 25 years old. Uh, nothing interesting really happens in my life. Uh, the other day, uh, I, I, something interesting happened. I, I, I didn't know if I wanted to tell y'all about this, but you ever got caught fucking <laughs> by your kids? You know what I'm saying? By your kids, it's, it's, it's kind of, you know, you're, you're hurting their heart. You know what I'm saying? What are you doing to mommy? Long story short, me and my girl, it's a Saturday evening. We chilling. We ain't got no business humping on a Saturday evening. But shit, we young. We gonna fuck. God damn it. We gonna get it on. So uh, if I recall correctly, I was on bottom. I was at the bottom, and I was, you know, you got to get up in it. You know, you got to get up in it. You know what I'm saying? You got to hump from the bottom. Any real humpers know you got to hump from the bottom. Even when she on top, you hump from the bottom. You know what I'm saying? Just give her a little extra. Wiggle off in there. You know what I'm saying? If you got to wiggle, wiggle. So as I'm wiggling, I'm wiggling, all I hear is a boom. Oh, fuck, what was that? Did somebody just close the door? The door was supposed to be locked. What the... So she told me, she's like, uh, uh, you need to go fuss at him. I'm like, fuss? How am I how I'm supposed to fuss? What, what am I supposed to say? I don't even know what he's seen, but I know if he did see something, it was a whole lot of ball booty hole action going on in between. You know what I'm saying? I feel bad for my son, but I, I, I really need y'all's advice because I still haven't talked to him till this day. I don't know what to tell him. 
you know, I I, I, I want to tell him, look, we was wrestling. We was wrestling and she was winning. You know what I'm saying? So I, oh my God. <laughs> Woo. Yeah, so uh, that's that's the dilemma in my life right now. The other dilemma, you know, um, they're trying to get rid of the plan B's, man. They're trying to get rid of the plan B's. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> my next one was supposed to be free. I got that punch card. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I haven't had so many. My next one was free. And you telling me y'all going to get rid of them? God damn it. That ain't even your pussy no more. It ain't. That's the government pussy. That pussy is for the government. It is. When you and your woman and you're hitting it, you're hitting it good, you're getting in there. Uh, 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 who that pussy for, baby? She ought to look back and say, the government. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. That's all I have for the night, you guys. It was free. <laughs> yes, a good night. indeed. Chris, don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Uh... <laughs> How you doing? Chris came in and killed it. Y'all make some more fucking noise for Chris Fades right there. <laughs> How y'all doing? Chris, it's your second time. Second time. How this, do you feel it went? This is my second time. I feel it went better than the first. I feel as if I, I was able to get the jokes that I wanted to get out, out you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes it gets kind of, you know, and you, you forget what you're saying and stuff. So it was fun. I, I, I was able to make y'all laugh. and that made uh, feel good. Hell yeah. You were great, man. We loved it. Um, one of one of my favorite things is when you see talent, and for sure you have it. I don't know. You do do the barber shop. It says you're a barber. For sure, that's going to be your second job. Yeah. And comedy <laughs> is going to be number one, dude. Stick with it. This Thank you, man. I appreciate it so much, dude. Wow. Really good set. Thank you, man. First of all, oh yeah, you grabbed them right from the beginning, and you just took them on a ride, and that's literally uh, perfection in my book, dude. Great job, and we're gonna stay in touch. I want you to come back. We're going to do Gilla, Gilla Brew House Brewing uh, Company. Yeah, I, right on. Uh, <laughs> where, where the traffic bad at? Where the traffic's bad. <laughs> you, you damn right. Yes, like, you'll be at that red light for about 20 minutes, yeah. so prepare. Uh, but we'd definitely love to have you back. Uh, in addition to that, dude, just, you know, keep at it. Your jokes were great, and your segues were good, too. If you keep it all in the same theme, it's easy to go from one to the other and bounce. And, uh, yeah, dude, uh, you did not seem like it was your second time. And that's, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we loved it. One more time. Give it up for Chris Fay. You guys have been wonderful. Awesome, folks. Well, we got, we got like six minutes left. Do you want to bring everybody up and just, what do you want to do? You want to do fashion show? Uh, you want to see who knits the best wreath in the house? Uh, Oh, she said, there ain't no competition in here is what I heard. So, <laughs> uh-oh, throwing down. How many kids are in the building? Have people come in with their kids? Uh, grown adults. <laughs> How many people were born today? Raise your hands. Any people born in the audience? Birth, that's crazy, right? Who did that? Uh, so, yeah, thank you guys for coming. Uh, there's not much more to do. Uh, if you had some pictures taken, make sure you tag it. Uh, go to Jeff Vance Show. Uh, make sure you tip Scotty. Rock star over there. Make sure you tip her. Uh, the comedians, if you still want to tip them, we're going to leave that up. Uh, we're going to kick some music back on. And thank you guys again so much for coming. Uh, making dreams come true. There is a bathroom. Got you covered, Mom. Uh, that's it. Have a good night. Thank you, guys. One more time, give it up for our comedians over there. Great sets.